Hi everybody, how are you? My allergies are acting up a little bit. My eyes are watering, <laughs> everything's watering. Let me tell you something. I, you know what, it has been, uh, if we have to be quarantined in our houses, I've been trying to look on the positive of all this. And uh, one of the things that I have enjoyed is uh, this morning, I've been able to attend uh, different churches and services via live all over the country. I've been to church so many times this morning already. <laughs> And, and, and everybody, what I'm, what I'm loving, the positive of what I'm loving is people are, if they have a, the ability to play an instrument or to sing, they're doing it live. I know a lot of our gospel artists that are unable to travel, they're doing concerts um, on their live. It's just been a fantastic thing. You know, I was just thinking of, of, um, what would we do if we didn't have the ability, uh, the technology to be live? And um, it's been amazing. I've, I've been to church in um, tech, different places in Texas this morning. I've been to church in Tennessee. Uh, I've been to church in, 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 in a couple places in Kentucky. And so I've been able to do that. And then I just got the phone. I was able to, I, my dad's only living relative besides well he has an uncle uncle jimmy uh but his only sibling is what i'm trying to say is in a nursing home and so i call her every day um and today i haven't had it we haven't had a opportunity to connect so today we got to connect and um it's my dad's oldest sister and so um we, I, I told her, I said, Sherry Sue, I'm going to call you every day. And even though you can't have visitors and I'm going to call you and we're going to, I'm, we're going to uh, talk about the Lord. And I'm going to pray with you. And, and you're going to tell me funny stories about when you and my dad were little and she had us, she had me laughing and I was laughing. <laughs> and so there are some good things that are coming from all of this if you look for them you'll find them and uh, one of like i said we're be we're able to take this time and to connect with people that maybe we wouldn't have connected with them otherwise and so i want you to search your heart uh, i've called a couple of my neighbors and sometimes they look out their window and i look out my window and we just wait you know and are you doing all right across the street and and so the positive of this is the con the humanity, the connection between people has just been wonderful. I want to uh, go back into Psalms and uh, uh, and talk about this scripture, this this part of the Bible. It's it's fantastic. I, again, I'm gonna say it every time we do this video is there's nothing like having a deeper revelation. Of Psalms 91 and I know that you can read um, the Bible and have you ever read something and you've heard it your whole life and then all of a sudden you're reading it or you hear it it's like a, 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 the Holy Spirit just brings something deeper that you just missed before and you're like how, oh my that that makes so much sense how did I miss that I think sometimes that happens to me is because I needed that at that time you know what I'm saying like I, I needed um, I trust I trust the Holy Spirit in my life not just on Sundays and Wednesdays but every day you know every day it, it kind of reminds me of um, when I get up in the morning I'm like good morning good morning Lord good morning uh, precious spirit good morning um, father and um, and, and I just I just start my day off, you know, when you're in intimacy, when you're in relationship uh, with the Word and with Jesus, then 
that's not a Sunday and Wednesday thing. That's an everyday thing. That's a lifestyle. And I'm, I am seeing, I'm feeling even that more of us are being more attentive to that relationship now more than ever. And that's just a great thing. Let me see who's on here and then we're going to get started. Hey, John in Colorado. I love you. I love your family. God bless you in Colorado. And uh, hi, Miss Patty and Goldinger in Kansas and Melissa in East Texas and uh, Samuel in Tennessee. God bless you so much. I just miss you and, and love you guys. Uh, Jessica, Robin, so many more. Uh, a lot of my preacher friends right now, they won't, they'll, they, a lot of my pastors and ministers, they're not going to catch this live because they're probably still preaching. <laughs> They're brought, they're preaching. I know my girl Amanda. She is preaching up a storm, and so um, uh, I we I've been sharing that. And uh, my pastor, Pastor Jerry Phelps at Tyler Metro Church. Listen, Pastor Jerry and Tyler Metro Church. That man loves the Word of God. Let me tell you, and he has an anointing. Can I just can I just brag on some of my my minister friends because I am I have been blessed. Let me just can I just testify? Can I just give honor where honors due a little bit before we get into Psalms? I have been blessed my whole life to be surrounded by men and women of the Lord that just that love him that they they either work in the office of a FIFO ministry. But I, I was raised by some of the greatest pastors, um, evangelists, prophets, apostles, teachers. I've been surrounded by them my whole life. And I'm just I'm just grateful for that. And one of uh one of the things that I absolutely absolutely love about Pastor Jerry Phelps there at Tyler Metro Church is that when he goes to say something, let me pretend I got a ring. And everybody at Tyler Metro knows what I'm talking about right now. Pretend there's a ring right here. When I'm at home, I don't wear any jewelry. I don't ever take my necklace off, but I don't wear any jewelry. So he'll go like that on that pulpit. Because when he goes to minister something, you can, I can guarantee you, this is not something that he just thought was a good idea or something that just was, it's just come. This has been something that has been embedded by him, by the Holy Spirit in his heart. And he preaches the word with integrity and he preaches on purpose. He preaches it on purpose. And uh, he's been pastoring at Tyler Metro for many years and he was started off as an evangelist and uh, has been he's he's i can call pastor jerry anytime and he will uh, minister to me and advise me and um and um when he has so many other things he could be doing i just love him pastor jerry phelps and miss martha there at tyler metro church so even if you don't go there because you attend your service on sunday morning where you're at or maybe he's too far away this is your opportunity uh, because he did do a live, I have shared it, to also sometime today, maybe you went to church this morning by live uh, at your church, but maybe this afternoon you can go to church again to a live, if your church doesn't do a live, to another church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And also, um, I've shared, um, I went to church this morning a little bit with Restoring Hope Church with Pastors Aaron and Amanda, who are incredible, and they have been standing on the forefront, and um, did you see where God has blessed them with abundance? They're a community church, and, and so is Tyler Metro. Tyler Metro also is a community church where they're giving food and helping. Uh, uh, they are the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, they are doing what they're, they're supposed to be doing, and yesterday... Uh, gave away 33,000 pounds of chicken. They served 400 cars. That's amazing. That's amazing. So uh, don't miss out on these services. I mean, you've got plenty of time to, 
even if you can't watch them, you can stick some earbuds in. And every one of these places, including I'm sure your place of worship and including Harrison Ministries, we're still preaching. We haven't stopped. They're still, they still have a ministry to do. And so every one of these churches also will have either websites. I know your church will too. And, um, or text to give. So, um, Pastor Aaron, Aaron Crabb this morning, Darren, when he was taking the offering, um, to a, uh, on live, there was no one in the building, but some few people, his praise team, but he took an anointed, powerful offering in the Lord. And so I encourage you, even if you're not paying ties to restoring hope, that you want a, a deeper insight of, of what's going to, um, prophesy and declare freedom over your finances in a place where it looks like it's limited i challenge you to go to restoring hope's uh, website i mean uh, live and listen to the offering part of that that because let me tell you something he he brought it out perfect i applaud you pastor aaron that matter of fact i got on my text to give <laughs> and i said I, I am going to prophesy I'm a giver. I believe in giving. And um, my daddy always said, if you ever get in a bond, give your way out of it. And so I was, I was practicing that this morning. And so you have the opportunity not only to bless the house in which you are fed, but to bless other houses in which you may be feeding yourself spiritually from. And so these churches, your church, your church, and these churches and these ministries and these evangelists out here that are continuing lifting people up, continually preaching the best they can, they are good ground. They are good ground. And you got to remember, we don't give because they need it. You give because you do. When you give of your tithes and offerings, I, don't, I didn't mean to go off on this, but when you give of your tithes and offerings, then you are prophesying. Lord, I know, I know even in the midst of famine, you are my provider. And that gift that you're giving, text to give, a lot of these churches have websites where you can give, uh, text to give, um, like I did this morning to one of our churches. Um, you, um, you are able to unlock and make the word of God alive in your life. By that you know that no matter what is going on out here, that today and tomorrow and the following day and the following day and the following day, He is still your provider. He will provide for you what you plant, what you plant, what you put your seed in, will definitely bring back your harvest. It is the word of God, whether you believe it or not. You say, "Well, I don't believe that." Well, then I, I'm, that makes me sad for you because that is that right there is going to be the success of all of us is when we continue to dwell in what the Word of God says. And the God also demonstrated He loved us so much, He gave. you got to understand. God loved us so much, He knew the power of, of a gift and so he changed the world by giving he gave his only begotten son he gave a gift he gave his best come on somebody and if god did it knowing then who are we to question that so don't hold back i know that some of us may not be able to go to work maybe our finances maybe you're you're looking here and you're like this is affecting me and it's scary. And you're like, oh, I don't know. This is the perfect time to step out of fear and step into faith and say, Lord, you said you would cause men to give in my bosom. You are a supernatural God and I find myself in a now moment. And I'm not going to, you know what fear does? It causes you to hoard. That's, what, that's why our grocery, grocery stores are empty right now. It causes you to, it, 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 it causes hoarding will actually lead to lack. But giving 
I know it's, it doesn't make sense here, but giving brings abundance. Okay? I wrote down something this morning. And I wrote it down. It was something I was praying and I, I said out of my mouth and I thought, ooh, that is good right there. <laughs> and so I wrote it down and it says, don't allow pain. Or you could put anything right there. Don't allow fear. Don't allow anxiety. Don't allow pain to rob you from the truth. Oh, it's the nursing home. I, I called into a nursing home and was preaching to them this morning. <laughs> I called into the nursing home and I, I was preaching them a little sermon into this nursing home. And don't allow pain, or you can say don't allow fear, don't allow lack to rob you from truth. Don't allow negativity. Don't allow it. Come on, put your foot down. Put your foot down right now and say, I am not going to allow pain, fear, anxiety emotions lack to rob me from the truth I'm not going to allow it to happen amen so I was pre that's that was my nursing home sermon this morning <laughs> oh my gosh amen amen are y'all ready to talk about where are we at verse 7 remember the power of Psalms 91 is in the first three words in the first verse. The power of verses 2 through 16 comes from the very first three words of this chapter. He that dwelleth. He that dwelleth. I've said it every video, I'm going to say it again. When I was reading this outside, it was like the Lord just lifted he that dwelleth off the page. Changed my life. Changed my life. What changes my life follows my, my ministry then began to change. And what I saw was that what he that dwelleth was powerful because it was almost like a, a, it was a question to me in the midst of my pain that's why i'm saying don't allow your pain to rob you from your truth in the midst of pain in the midst of lack in the midst of questions not knowing what's happening around us in the midst of everything around you see everything around you right now has a voice it always has and it's up to us to decide in what voice we're going to listen to. And whatever we listen to or whatever we obey, whatever voice we obey, that in which we are worshiping. Okay? And so it's very important. That's why the, the Bible says, Jesus says, my sheep, they know my voice. They know my voice. It's very important. Listen, you don't have to be a prophet to hear the voice of the Lord. If you are a sheep, <laughs> if you belong to him, if you're in relationship with Jesus Christ, you have the ability to hear. Okay? And so what we have to do is we have to say, I say this all the time, Lord, keep my ear tuned to your voice. Lord, keep my ear tuned uh, to your spirit. Keep my spirit sensitive to what you have. I want to not, I don't want to miss anything that he is saying. I don't want to miss anything that he is doing. Lord, keep my spirit tuned in. And how do I do that? One of the three, one of the things that I do personally to keep myself tuned in is I limit what I allow. Uh, my natural ears to hear. I limit uh, what I allow my natural eyes to see. I just limit those things. You know, when I was a, a young girl and a teenager, uh, a lot of you know this now, and it is the truth. I can't help it. But I, I, you know, I was raised in Texas, and listen, I love riding horses, and I love, I love um, uh, music of all styles. 
you know, and, and uh, country and jazz and opera and symphony and, 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 and I loved all, I, I love um, uh, musicians that, I, I love that sound, you know, some people think they can play, but then you know when you run across somebody that that's their gift, they're a true musician. Um, there's a difference. There is a difference. There's people who can play a guitar and there's people who are gifted They are true musician and can do things with that guitar just blow your mind There's a difference and you you have to have an ear to hear that well, um, I I I love different sounds. I love drums. I, I'm a drummer. I've been drumming since I was a little big girl I don't get to drum as often now because I'm I'm more preaching, but I played on a praise team. I was a praise team drummer for years at a church. And um, the or one of the drummers, we actually had several drummers in that church. And at one time in our church, we had um, two percussion sets. And one of them was mine. And then we had the main drummer in the middle. And we would all switch around and take turns. You know, I had um, uh, tone blocks and timbales and and Jimby and uh, rain sticks and um, uh, our pastor is a professional drummer his son is also a, an amazing drummer and um, he uh, uh, our, 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 our music was through the roof and he he was he, I think he played in studios before st as studio musicians for drummers for different groups and stuff like that himself but um, I remember sometimes we would have drum solos. The the Holy Spirit would hit that service, and we would have drum solos. I think our la longest drum solo went like four hours long. <laughs> I mean, as long as they were shouting, we were playing. And so, um, I, I drummed for years, and I, I absolutely loved it. I, I don't know what I would sound like today if I got on a set because it's been so long. But um, I love that sound. I love the drumming. But I remember, I'm, I'm just talking, aren't I? I remember um, one time me and my friend went to play for this bishop. Y'all hear my heart? Have you ever played for three bishops? That, what that means is you're going to play as fast as you can, as long as you can. And so we went to play for these three bi bishops that were holding a revival in Illinois. And I remember, I thought, oh, dear Lord, because... If I come up on the platform, people always expect me to be a backup singer and not a drummer. And uh, I remember being in the back, and we were the praise team was joined hands to praying, and and um, they didn't know that inside of me I was about to throw up. <laughs> I was like, I, I was nervous, and um, I said, Lord, I remember they were praying of how to anoint the service and. God and, and and this is going to be a powerful time and I'm the drummer at this service and I'm going please come quickly Lord Jesus if you've ever wanted to come <laughs> right now would be perfect just please I was dressed <laughs> please God come quickly Lord Jesus because uh, there was so many people there and I thought oh I don't know if I um I just I was intimidated this white girl is going to go up and take the drumsticks and start playing uh, these drums. And um, so I remember when I was back there and they were really praying and excited about this revival. And I think there was two or three services a day. And um, I, the Holy Spirit, I don't know why I'm saying this. Maybe this is for somebody. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, what an unbelievable drummer the Holy Ghost is. And I, I had my eyes closed and I said, in my spirit, I said, what an unbelievable drummer you are. What an unbelievable drummer the Holy Ghost is. And when I grabbed those sticks and I sat down on that stool, I'm telling you what, I played, it was like a prophetic. And I had so much fun. And when I realized it wasn't about me, <laughs> when I realized it wasn't about me, and that if I trust in the Lord, in that in that moment of intimidation, in that moment of fear, and if I surrendered myself and just closed my eyes and stepped into that anointing, stepped into that glory, 
and gave him my hands and my feet and just played. Man, did we have a time. We had the best time. And I think every time I played from that point on, I would say, Lord, bless your people through this sound. Come on, somebody out there, you're a musician. Bless your people through, what an unbelievable guitarist that the Holy Spirit must be. Can you imagine what an unbelievable piano player, what an unbelievable whatever that the Holy Spirit is. And let me tell you, we had us a time, but the church that I served at, we had, I don't know, we had four or five drummers and three of them were going all the time. <laughs> so, um, miss those days. And they were they were for such a time as then, and now I I'm not fine. I I've I've kind of traded in my drumsticks for a microphone, and so what I have now I'm in the back saying, Lord, what an unbelievable just minister through me to these people. So I pray that right now, minister through me right now. Minister through me right now to your people. Are y'all ready to talk about Psalms? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. You know clapping means victory. When you get nervous this week or when your kids start kind of going stir crazy or you don't know or whatever may happen, just start walking around your house clapping your hands. It means victory. You're prophesying. Listen, I don't know how today's going to go. I don't know how today's going to go. Bella's over here clapping her hands. Bella, we don't know how today's going to go. She's got her storybook of Jonah. She's she spent this time. She, she, she Her Aunt Don Don gave her a whole stack of uh, books. Let me see that little book. Um, there are these little books, and they're all... They're the, they're, it's the Word of God, but in these little books like this. And she has been spending her days reading about these stories. She's absolutely love it. But anyway, let's get to Psalms because we're 27 minutes into this video. We've talked about all kinds. Okay, so the Bible says in Psalms 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, come on somebody, that is the declaration. That is the prophecy. That is where you step into that authority. That's where you step into that place and begin to prophesy to your atmosphere. You're prophesying to your things because you have the ability. The authority has been given to you through Jesus Christ. And now you have life and death. You have the authority of life and death in your tongue. So it says, I will say of the Lord, he is mine. Take ownership. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Remember, that means he is going to deliver you because of you continuing to exist in his word, because you're going to remain in him every day, every situation that comes up. You're not going to try to get emotional about it. You're not going to think, how should I deal with this? The first thing, because of the intimacy that you have, because of the relationship that you're with, with Jesus Christ, the first thing that's going to come up into your spirit is what does the word of God say? say about this that's what you're going to say what does the word of God say about this I shared with you when I was in the hallway of my father back in 2015 and he had been dead for eight minutes that's really what I was doing when I, I, my sister was saying you know what are we going to do about this what are we going to do now my spirit rose up that that I've been meditating on the word of God that I had been writing upon the tablets of my heart and my my mouth was now the the pen of the ready rider. I knew I had the authority of life and death in my mouth. I began to say, uh, I'm going to declare the word of God. I was thinking in that hallway, what does the word of God say about this? 
my father is laying in here not breathing heart has stopped what does the word of god say because remember i told you that the most powerful thing that happened to me in that hallway was i realized that even though my circumstance was grim dim and felt so final it did not change the word of god and that through my belief what i believed in and the what i was going to prophesy or put into my atmosphere would change what was happening around me you got to understand your situation may be grim but the word of god can change and bring life to a death situation it will every time the reason why it will is because it is the only truth there is no other truth so it says here in verse 3 not only am i going to deliver you from what is trying to trap you i'm going to deliver you from the trapper okay god says he's not going to just whatever he starts he will finish he 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 surrounds us he doesn't just do one thing but he takes care of the whole entire thing he says i'm going to deliver you if you continue in my word when you dwell when you are hidden uh, uh in the shadow of the almighty and declaring from that hidden place he says i am going to keep you from that which is trying to trap you plus the trapper isn't that powerful verse four he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust his truth shall be listen his truth not your truth not this person's truth not that person's truth he said his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler and this is just reminding you again he's saying you must dwell you must remain in me because see that buckler remember we talked about it it's something that it's a shield that surrounds you it covers you from all sides the bible says he says i am your rear guard i am your rear guard he is on the left the right the top he surrounds you isn't that wonderful isn't this wonderful i'm telling you psalms 91 is powerful thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day continue to study verses five and six there is depth to that okay uh for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday sorry i have so many notes over my words i need to quit right i need to it's hard to see okay here we are verse 7 it reads like this a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not say not it shall not come nigh thee a thousand a troop of problems a company of problems a company of, of 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 things shall fall shall be cast down this is what this means it shall be cast down it should be thrown down at thy side and ten thousand maybe a multitude of things have you ever heard people say when it when it uh when it rains it pours or something like that i'm not really good with cliches <laughs> but a multitude of things in other words god is not limited to just take care of one thing but his word remember that buckler it is surrounding you i know god has protected me from things i wasn't even aware was fighting me you know what i'm saying he is preemptive his word is preemptive his word is a buckler to me it surrounds me he said shall fall at thy and ten thousand at thy right hand you know your right hand is also considered the south it's also cons considered the stronger place it's considered direction the right hand he's saying a thousand shall fall at thy side ten thousand at thy right hand 
at, at the direction in which you're, you're looking at or going there, but it shall not come nigh thee. It will not draw near to you. It will not. Here's where I want to get to. When it says it shall not come nigh thee, it's saying it will not penetrate in which you've been transformed by. It will not, it cannot disturb. It cannot mess up, interfere in which you've made stronger because of the dwelling. You understand what I'm saying? You got to, because the transformation that the Bible talks about in Romans chapter 12, that transformation that is talked about be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing your mind that transformation that's made by his word is a permanent state dwelling is a permanent state you got to understand intimacy relationship that you establish with his word when transformation takes place becomes permanent so this verse right here is talking about that it's going back it's saying listen if you make the notion if you make the decision to dwell and to be hidden through him by him because of his word and you allow transformation to take place because of the word of god and when i'm talking i'm not talking about memorizing scripture i'm talking about having the scripture be written upon the tablets of your heart. What he's saying is uh, that 10,000 shall fall at thy side, uh, a, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and 10,000 at thy right, right hand, it shall not come nigh thee. It's because it cannot penetrate, the enemy cannot penetrate what God has made permanent. Come on, somebody. The enemy cannot change what God has established to be a permanent thing. The enemy cannot uh, uh, question. The enemy cannot pervert what has become uh, permanent. That's why dwelling is so powerful. Oh my Lord, this is powerful. The enemy cannot penetrate what is hidden from him. The enemy cannot mess up. He cannot destroy. He cannot kill. He cannot steal from something he don't know how to find. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about dwelling. I'm talking about dwelling. I'm talking about continuing to exist. This verse 7 is telling you, it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not penetrate what God has made permanent amen and that is what verse 7 is saying so i encourage you to dwell are you hidden this morning are you dwelling are you continuing to exist are you feeding your spirit listen you don't have any if you have internet and there, if you say, well, I don't have internet, there are companies making internet possible. We have no excuse right now. You have no excuse to be depressed. You have no excuse to be in fear. You have no excuse of anything. God is right there. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He's just asking you to dwell. Because what you get transformed by becomes a permanent state. And that permanent state cannot be penetrated by the enemy of any kind. And that is dwelling. Amen. I bless your life. I bless your life. I praise you right now, Father. Lord, I send the word out to those that hear this live now or later, and I bless their life. Lord, your hand is not short. You are the provision for us. You are our way maker. Lord, we are not afraid. Our hearts are not troubled. 
because we are renewing our minds. We are being transformed by your word. And we are becoming a people of a people. The church of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you so much. I love you so much. This is the time. Find a place. If you haven't given of your tithes and your offerings, your place of worship, or whatever ministry is feeding you. He says, bring all your tithes and offerings into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house. Remember, you may be nervous trying to hoard, trying to hang on to that because you don't know what your financial future holds. But guess what? The word of God didn't change because of this. He said, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken together, running over. I will cause it to happen. I am God and I do not lie. So if you haven't, listen, I've done it. Your church, your evangelist, where, whatever, will have a place for you to prophesy this morning with your offering. They'll have a place for you to worship. If you want to contact us, you can go to harrisonministries.com and look at our web website there. Or you can go here and personal message us. We're here for you. We're praying for you. But I, I encourage you, keep those phones charged and go to church somewhere today. Because church and worship and praise and people, the church is live all over the world. Isn't that wonderful? The church is live all over the world. Amen. I love you so much. God bless you.